Mixologist and mixology are intended for responsible adults of legal drinking age who wish to try new drinks, get information about alcoholic beverages, drinks and cocktails, or explore the bartending profession. This program is purely intended for entertainment purposes. G'day, I'm Sean Saul and welcome to Liquid Revolution. Today we're going to be talking cocktails with Kathy Kay, who's the director of the Art of the Cocktail Festival, which is a festival happening in Victoria here November 7th and 8th, and it's completely devoted to my favourite thing in the world, spirits and cocktails. Now Kathy is a avid cocktail enthusiast at home, um, and it's not easy to find that in a customer or a, a person who doesn't work behind the bar themselves. Welcome Kathy. Thank you. Nice to be here. Fantastic. So. You like making cocktails at home, don't you? Very much you so. You like entertaining, you like I like drinking people. them out too. You like drinking them out as well. Um, the first time I met you, you came into my bar and I was just assuming, uh, unassuming that you weren't going to order anything special and you whacked out these really weird classic cocktails and asked me a million questions. Um, and I think that's why, actually why we're friends. <laughs> so I like to be an informed consumer. <laughs> so um, you like entertaining at home. I think a couple of Sundays ago, um, you came in and had breakfast with me and told me that you were doing a, a cocktail paired appetizer menu that night with, for friends. I was. I like doing things like that on the weekend. It's, uh, I used to be a chef, so it's fun to cook. And, and now that you know, I've developed more of an interest in cocktails, it's fun to pair them. And, and, but then it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's better to go with one cocktail. <laughs> so what are we going to make today? Today we are first going to make a frisky. A frisky? And yep. where does this one come from? Now this one I found in the Tales of the Cocktail Book, which is a, a cocktail festival in New Orleans. Yep. And so I like this and uh, we're going to do a theme today of sherry cocktails because I think sherry is a nice way in with a lot of uh, those small, perfect, tiny cocktails that I mm -hmm. like so much. Um, it, it sort of dampens down the heavy spirit forward and adds an element that uh, is nutty and toasty and, and really quite enjoyable. So for people at home, sherry is a fortified wine, so it's similar to port and Madeira and uh, in that sort of family. Uh, it's it's very like more like a vermouth and has a real good depth to it and it's going to really make these cocktails pop. So what are we starting with? Some ice in the shaker? Yes, ice in the shaker. So what, what made you start as a cocktail enthusiast? What sort of got you into it? Um, I think I just always liked the idea. I mean, there's something sophisticated about, you know, like when I was a kid, my parents would have a little cocktail party and my mother would make all these like grasshoppers and pink oh. ladies and, and it would just seem quite fabulous. And so as I got older, I would occasionally have a cocktail party. But then one day I walked into uh, Vessel yeah. in Seattle and Jamie Boudreau was the, the mixologist and it just opened my whole world for me. And then shortly after that, I ended up in New York and I ended up going to three amazing New cocktail Taylor and, yeah, yeah. and PDT. And, and Death and & Co. Yeah. And, and it was just, it was the best, you know, and it's like, okay, now they can only be perfect. And it's addictive. Yes, it is. So <laughs> no, no, you have to always uh, <laughs> be, uh, use restraint. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to put an ounce of rye in here. Now rye adds a nice sweetness to a cocktail, but then I'm going to follow that up with a little bit of gin because that, whoops, whoops, that's not the gin, this is the gin. I'm going to add up just half an ounce of, of um, gin because it, it'll give it a nice citrusy and that junipery note. And then normally what I do is I put in dry sherry um, and I'm only going to put in, in one ounce of dry sherry here and it's just going to, it's going to mellow it all together and give it a little nutty essence to it. Fantastic. And then we've got a mixer? We have got a mixer. We've got a cranberry juice, don't I we? I have to put, yes, a little cranberry. Now this is unsweetened cranberry. I, I tend not to like a lot of sweet drinks and what I do when I find a recipe like this I will, um, I'll tweak it. So I'll try it the way the the person who created it first wanted it and then, you know, I'll start put to play with it. Put your little twist on it. Exactly. Like I probably put less cranberry, <coughs> less sherry in it so that so it's a little more And a half balanced. ounce of sugar? Yes, half ounce of simple syrup. So just simple syrup in there. Okay, so now we're going to shake that. Now, before we do that, we've got some uh, little vintage glasses here uh, that yes. I brought in from home. Now, it's a balsamic rim. Now, where did this come from, the balsamic vinegar rim? Uh, it, it was in the recipe originally, and I, I sort of think it adds it, like a kind of richness and, and really good balsamic okay. vinegar has a sweetness yep. to it. And, you know, Venturi Schultz on the island, you exactly. know, if you want something local, you can even do that, so and we'll then that's that a beautiful. Up. We'll just rim that now while you're shaking that. All right. Definitely different because I've never actually I've seen balsamic vinegar in a drink, yeah. but never in on the rim of a on of a glass. So have a pull that out. 
Oh, that does look fantastic. Now, the, now, folks, for folks at home, like they've they've seen the big bathtub martini glasses you get at the local pub, local bar. Um, these are coming back into vogue. These classic style martini glasses. Now, these are these are. 20, 30, 40 years old. Um, these are starting to come into vogue. And if you can see, like this is what a cocktail should look like. It's smaller, chilled, perfectly drinkable. You're not drinking a big bathtub full of juice and liqueur. You're drinking a balanced cocktail. I'm gonna have to have a try this now because I'm perplexed. <laughs> That's different, but good. That's really good. Okay, so we'll get these out of the way. So the next one we're gonna make is I know you have a, an infatuation with him, uh, Jamie uh, Boudreaux. <laughs> it's not really. I don't. <laughs> so this um, one's called a Latin trifecta. Yes. Okay. Yes. And it uses one of my uh, favorite ingredients, which is chinar. And chinar is um, an Italian uh, aperitif liqueur, okay. often used as a digestif because it's a little better. And, and based um, off uh, artichokes. Artichokes, isn't it? yes, based on artichokes. Now don't be scared. Remember what we were talking about before? Do not be scared. <laughs> okay. Try everything. If you don't, oh, if you don't like it the first time, try it again just to make sure. So, now, whoop, there we go. So I'm putting one ounce of uh, tequila, then followed by just three, three quarters, quarters of an ounce. Of an ounce. I, I still in, a lot in of Jamie's recipe, it is in Jamie's recipe. Well, this is also like because it's a, an imperative liqueur. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's not um, it's sweet as well. Mm -hmm. So um, and then just a little bit, half an ounce, half ounce of, the, the, of what the sherry, dry sherry. Now this one's reasonably simple. This is more of a yes. uh, a drink. Now, now, folks, when when you're making drinks at home, the best rule of thumb is is that if it's got juice in it, shake it and shake it hard. If it's just got alcohol in it, just stir it. Just stir it and let it fold it through. Let all those flavors fold through and chill. And um, the other thing I saw, I went to Zigzag, which is another cocktail lounge in, in uh, Seattle, and Murray Stenson, mm -hmm. who is like the best bartender in Seattle, he stirs, I swear, almost everything. Every and it's like every, you know, every time I looked at what he was doing, he was stirring, you know, and, I, and he stirs so vigorously. I mean, it's wild, but his cocktails, you know, they're clearer, they're yeah. pretty. I just love it. as rigorous okay. as I get. So now when it comes to stirring cocktails at home, you'll see like you'll a big jug in a in a homeware store with a big martini stirrer and that sort of thing that's made out of glass. I prefer stainless steel because stainless steel holds the, the chill better. It's all personal preference on how good it looks. So then we're just gonna strain this out. Oh wow. It's got a gorgeous colour. Isn't that beautiful? And what are we what are we garnishing this with? We're doing this a, is a with bit an of an orange, orange twist. twist. Um, so, let's grab an And you make here. the most beautiful. I, thank you. <laughs> I didn't bring my potato peeler today, but no. I can still do it with a sharp knife. So with a twist, folks, you can do the way that the twist with a, with a channeler, but this is probably the best way because you want to get rid of all that excess pith. Yeah, and definitely with a p potato peeler, I think it, yeah. it, it, it is easier. You usually don't have to go back in and, and uh, take a, a lot of and pith then, away. As any bartender should, or we should be thinking about presentation. Slice that down like that one edge. I know, I was just watching a video with Jim Romdell, who's just done, who's, who's the mixologist at Vessel. Yeah. And um, he doesn't trim his peel, and I thought, why so? <laughs> so you just look at that. It's just, it's, that's what it should look like when it goes into the drink. And if you're feeling adventuresome, you can light it before you <laughs> throw it in there, which is kind of fun because it adds a little little burnt note to it, which a is kind of fun. A showman's touch as well. So then you just pull the twist, all those oils will like be escape out onto the, the top of the drink and you just drop it in. And then we have the Latin trifecta. That's it. So I've never had a Jamie Boudreaux drink, so I suppose I'm going to have to now. <laughs> well, this is tweaked. This is tweaked. <laughs> a tweaked Jamie Boudreaux drink. He had more chino. Oh, chino comes through very nicely, though. It does, but not overpowering, I no, think. No, it works really well with tequila. Yeah. 